Representative Zoli? Here. Representative Kolkmeyer? Here. Representative Adams? Representative Afferman? Here. Representative Enlicker? Here. Representative Henson? Here. Representative Newman? Here. Representative Fouch? Here. Representative Rhodes? Here. Representative Walton Gray? Okay, a quorum being established. The Select Committee on State and Local Governments is now in executive session. At this time, I move that we do pass House Bill 1631. This is Representative Alperman's bill regarding voter identification. It was voted out the Elections Committee by a vote of 8 to 3. Representative Enlicker, would you like to pass this to us? Okay. The bill uh, is pretty much by two slides. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I forgot that. The bill, the bill itself is the language is pretty much the same except for a few changes. And I'd like to direct you to line or page 29, page 2, line 29. Uh, the a few words were left out there, and distribution of state funds was removed. Page 2, line 52, the date was changed from January 1, 1950 to January 1, 1946. Page 3, line 23, the date was changed from January 1, 1950 to January 1, 1946. Page 4, line 102, beginning with 72 and down to line 109. This adds wording for funds to pay for documentation proofs of birth. If no, if no appropriations of funds are for enforcement. And what this does is, is uh, what the bill itself does is uh, guidelines for photo ID. Right. Is there any further discussion on the bill? Yes, uh, Representative Newman. Uh, yes, just to speak on the bill, Madam Chair. Let's proceed. Um, a couple of questions that I, I guess I'm going to refer back to either the bill sponsor or to the elections chair. Yeah, and Representative Elements here. So, yes, great. Either one of you. Um, can you explain, probably bill sponsor would be the most appropriate, why the appropriation um, in terms of being distributed was removed from the bill? I know that seemed to be a, a great concern in the past in terms of when they require, you know, um, election clerks to uh, to do additional duties that have a cost uh, to make sure that they actually receive the funds associated with it. Okay, Representative Altman. Not not really entirely clear on your question. Um, it, or let me be clear why distribution was removed from the bill. That was a provision that uh, Representative uh, Dogan put in from last year. Um, I, I, I don't. I, I, I'll refer to my my chairwoman. I don't remember why that decision was made last year entirely. Well, I don't know whether it was just a grammar thing. Maybe uh, if, the, if the funds are there, they decide. You know, if the appropriations are there, they'll probably go ahead and distribute them to the places. Well, plus, 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 as representative, I don't know if it. If it really matters because if the appropriation isn't there, then the intention of the bill is is pretty much null and void because it will not go into effect unless the state appropriates the funds. And the reason it's written like that is because we cannot, as a state legislator, uh, force to bind the hands of the state legislators to appropriate funds. So it has to be written this way, and that's why the clawback provision is put in there so that we can ensure that no one is going to be disenfranchised by this and make sure that if the funds are not appropriated, then this is not going to affect uh, Well, I guess my, my original question was, why was the term um, to be distributed removed? Because I think we can, that's been a concern with election clerks is, you know, the state can appropriate, but if, it's, if, they, if that money doesn't um, reach each county, then the burden's on the county. So that's why that's something that we're... The burden would not be on the county, um, Lady, because as, as the bill clearly states that an election authority does not have to appropriate, or does not have to... If the funds are not appropriated, then the provisions of this bill do not go into effect. Okay. So if we're, the funds are not we're, there... We're not appropriated, no Representative. Now we're, we're talking about distributed. That, that was kind of the thing that, that was made sure, or we're making sure in every election bill that that... Um, 
you know, the counties aren't having, you know, out there on the to drive. I, I, I completely agree with you, Lady. I think that Why that's, 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 that's my question. Okay, I, I, I don't think that it actually, because no, no cost right now is going to be associated with the county. This will be paid for entirely by the state. So I, I, I really don't know if that, I don't, I think that was mainly just cleanup language. I don't think that that actually had a, a large bearing on the bill. Well, I just wanted to point out that, that, that that's a, been a major problem in many election bills that we can say we appropriate, but, it, it, but the distribution is extremely important, particularly to, to counties to make sure that that doesn't fall on their backs. So I just wanted to point out to the committee that that, that was removed. Uh, also, I just want to point out that my general did just uh, totally against this bill as are, you know, uh, the majority of editorial boards around the country, and they have been for several years. Uh, we quite out committee, this is year 10 of trying to, to pass this. I also want this committee to be very clear that uh, this bill is not applicable until we change our constitution. Um, as you know, in 2006, this was ruled unconstitutional by the uh, state Supreme Court based on our state constitution. Um, and as I pointed out in the committee hearing, we spent a lot of time revering our constitution, and yet this bill would require a change. So we would have to vote for both people. So, um, and also uh, several comments that were made by um, uh, House members during the hearing is that um, perhaps the intent of this bill or these proposals is not to disenfranchise but it may be a consequence, and I want this committee to make to be clearly aware that there are current longtime voters who would not be able to uh, continue to vote because they do not have the documents uh, required, the underlying documents that would be required to obtain a photo ID. And also, because of those underlying documents, which could come from other states, other countries, etc., cetera, um, another statement was made that uh, by members of the committee that they recognize the cost of obtaining this ID would be an undue burden. So we already know because of our 10 years of discussion on this and because of the Supreme Court case that there are major problems. Um, it would be in an ideal world fabulous if everybody who was an eligible voter who even now is a uh, active eligible voter would have this uh, photo ID, but because of, of other you know, regulations of our state, they cannot meet those uh, requirements. And so I think we need to be very clear when we're talking about um, elections that that disenfranchisement does exist because of this proposal. Okay, thank you, Mr. Newman. Are there any further discussion on this bill? All right, seeing none. Oh, I'll get Representative Adams. I am. I'm new to this subject and area because I'm not on various committees and this is the first time I'm here. So I'm sorry that I may have a few questions to understand what's going on. Um, one question of either the chairman or the sponsor of the bill, will this ID conform to the real ID that is uh, now being uh, I guess mandated and in two years if we don't do it uh, our IDs do not conform to the federal government and supposedly people won't be able to fly is that correct? Right the, the, those, those are actually represented two different um, two different issues um, the uh, the forms of the identification that will be um, used for a photo ID is issued at by the state of Missouri or issued by the federal government um, especially the foreign affairs and things like that um, so it, it doesn't, those two issues are separate from each other. Um, that a Missouri ID would not have to comply with the Real ID Act in order to fit the provisions of this ballot. Uh, or, well, the, the reason why I ask is because I know I've heard the argument used before, and I thought I've even heard it on the floor uh, last, uh, last year, that you know everybody has to have a photo ID to fly. So this ID won't be able to fly. Is that correct? No, Representative Adams, I, you sponsor that bill. I'll be the first one to uh, 
sign on to that to make the uh, real ID the official ID to uh, vote in the state of Missouri. That would be an awesome <coughs> idea because there's background checks and all that that go along with the real ID. So uh, you follow that bill, and I'll be happy to put a sponsor. No, I, I'm just wondering. I'm just, you know, I've got questions. <laughs> uh, I, I must say, I'm going to have to vote against this piece of legislation because I really think that it, it's harkens back to a historical time. And some of you know that my training is as an American historian, and I was a professor for a number of years teaching this subject. And it reminds me of what happened in the mid 1800s, mid to late 1800s, when uh, there were a group of people who went around and they said they, quote, redeemed the South. And then that they basically said too many people were voting and they started coming up with various mechanisms to get around the new amendments to the Constitution that gave the vote. Uh, from uh, tissue paper ballots to new registration and then they said no you don't meet the qualification and eventually came out to even uh, wonderful things like uh, literacy tests and things like that so I see that and I'm sorry that I see that but you know that's what my historical background my training gives me because I know a number of people who would not make this qualification, particularly uh, with some of this documentation. I have a wonderful lady in my district who I think spoke before one of these committees in the past. Uh, I'm glad that you excluded her by age, but still I'm not sure she would even qualify. And she has been an elected official even in my district for many, many years. And I highly respected her, and her husband was a mentor to me, and so I, I have trouble with that. And I would even have trouble if my mother was still alive. She would not be able to, I think, satisfy that birth certificate qualification. And she was definitely born somewhere here in America. So, and my father was born on the Native American reservation. So I have those problems, and I'm sorry. I mean, represent it all. I just can't uh, can't go along with it. So thank you very much. You're Representative Newman. Uh, yes, to just to, to clarify too, I think Representative Adams brings up a good point. There are exceptions in this bill. Um, I believe it was age and is is one of them. But I want this committee to know uh, to be very clear: the exceptions in this bill do are not granted a regular ballot. They are granted a provisionary ballot. And then there's extra steps that they have to uh, to meet to enable for that that ballot to even um, count, and they can't meet the steps in the first place. So a week later, or so they're not still going to be able to meet that. So the uh, lady that the representative was talking about is actually a former school board member um, in our area and has a school named after her. Serious problems with her birth certificate. Uh, she is now in her late eighties. She cannot duplicate her signature and therefore would be granted a provisionary ballot, still would not count because she doesn't meet the first requirement. She cannot come back in three days and produce a, uh, a photo ID because she can't get a photo ID. So again, um, there were members of the uh, uh, majority party who realized that and even mentioned that in committee that this the intent is not to disenfranchise, but would be a consequence. So I think this committee needs to be very clear. There is a difference between provisionary ballots and, and regular ones. Thank you. Representative Altman. Uh, just, just really quick, I want, I want to point out that um, casting a provisional ballot is still being able to cast a vote for an election, and the validity of that will still be up to each independent uh, election authority in the 116 different, uh, 117 different uh, voting um, authorities in this state. And um, if you can't, if, if, if you cannot obtain the source documents of which I want to repeat, the state will pay for the cost of um, your inability to obtain these source documents will allow you to still cast a provisional ballot. So 
the notion that you will not be able to vote is completely false. And um, to say otherwise would probably be trying to um, conceal the truth. So thank you very much. Is there any further discussion? Representative Walton Gray? <laughs> yes, I think it's um, disingenuous to uh, think that you're casting a vote for the provisional ballot because the county can decide yes or no. I think it's, it's I don't say more to say, but it's like a slap in the face to those people who are in their 80s and 90s who for years could not vote, got the right to vote, did what they needed to do, and now you're telling them you don't get the same ballot that everyone else gets. I have people in my family as we were born in the South. At that time, there was a lot of literacy in all races in the South. So when they, and they didn't care. So when they did their birth certificate, they put anything on them, their names are misspelled. I don't know anyone from the South that correct birth certificates. So I, I don't want to just tell someone, well, you do get to vote that's 80 or 90, 70, 80, 90 years old. That's what they had to go through in the past. I think that's sad to say that to me. So I just want to make a mistake. Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, the motion before the committee is to do pass House Bill 1631. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Representative Silver? Aye. Representative Copeland? Aye. Representative Adams? Nay. Representative Alperman? Aye. Representative Antlicker? Aye. Representative Henson? Aye. Representative Newman? No. Representative Fouch? Aye. Representative Rhodes? Aye. Representative Walton Gray? No. By your vote of seven ayes and three noes, you have voted House Bill 1631 due pass. This time I move to do pass House Joint Resolution 53. This is Representative Duggar's resolution regarding voter identification. Voted out of the Elections Committee by a vote of 8 to 3. Representative Inlicker, would you like to explain the resolution? Um, yes, ma'am. HGR uh, 53 is an A for um, House Bill 1631. Um, the, there was a on line 4. Oh, so sorry. Page one, line four, page one. There was a grammar fix that so was kind of a repeating requiring too many things they said in the ballot issue, in the ballot language. So otherwise the, the, the language is the same as last year. Is there any discussion on this? Representative right. oh, Newman? Uh, yes, just wanted to quickly point out the reason for this joint resolution. As I mentioned, 2006, our state Supreme Court ruled based on our uh, Constitution, which has a stronger provision of right of the right of suffrage than the U.S. Constitution. Um, therefore, for the underlying bill to even go into effect, we, number one, have to alter our Constitution to allow it. Um, and, you know, we, particularly 2014, we saw nine different uh, constitutional uh, amendments on the ballot, and I believe that uh, as much as we talk about the sanctity of the Constitution, to quickly jump in uh, back to the vote of the people who do not understand uh, who is at stake here and who would be losing their ability to vote a regular ballot, um, but this constitutional amendment is basically telling the state Supreme Court that, you know, that your findings were wrong, we're going to take it to the vote of the people uh, and alter the Constitution. So as a consequence, certain people will not be able to vote. So I believe we need to be very clear on what this resolution will do and why it's required. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion before the committee is to pass House Joint Resolution 53. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Representative Solon? Aye. Representative Colfer? Aye. Representative Adams? No. Representative Alferman? Aye. Representative Representative Amaker? Aye. Representative Henson? Aye. Representative Newman? No. Representative Fouch? Aye. Representative Rhodes? Aye. Representative Walton Gray? No. 
by your vote of seven ayes and three noes, you voted House Joint Resolution 53 G pass. Uh, before we uh, leave, I'd like to welcome our two new members, Representative Adams and Representative Walton Gray. Welcome to the committee. Um, we had a great committee last year. We got a lot done. I would just like to also uh, reiterate, like last year, if you have any amendments you would like to bring to the committee, if you get it to my office by 3 o'clock on the Wednesday before we have our hearing, it would be appreciated so that we have time to distribute copies and make sure that it gets in. Um, otherwise, is there any further business that needs to come before the committee? Okay, we're adjourned.